I previously did a video before about why did Jesus curse the fig tree and explained the symbolism of what that really meant and the various symbolisms contained within that. And now I want to revisit that with an interpretive reading of the passage because I've been thinking more on the principle that if writing is expensive and difficult, that makes the symbolism that much more important. Because the symbolism is the descriptive measure that is being inserted into the text by symbolism rather than by two pages worth of description. So when we go back to this, you have to insert the symbolic meanings and the name meanings into the text. And I want to go through this passage doing that. As a brief summary, in the garden, there was the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And the trees represent either people or institutions. And so then there's various symbolisms throughout that where the fruit is the message being spoken and leaves are religious works. The serpent was a deceitful voice. So you have this institution giving a, a message that's a deceitful voice saying that it's a message of separation. It's a message of there's something that you need to achieve in order for God to find you acceptable. And then the result of eating the fruit, which is to internalize it and accept the message, it then plants the seed in your heart. And what grows out of that fruit is to feel ashamed and afraid of God. And then you attempt to cover that feeling of shortcoming, that being ashamed and afraid of God because there was nakedness. And so the nakedness means a vulnerability or a shortcoming or whatever along those lines. And so then what happens is this message opens their eyes to the nakedness being something to be ashamed of. The vulnerability is something to be ashamed of. And now they're ashamed and afraid of God. And they attempt to cover their shame with religious works, which is what the leaves are. So that's just a real brief summary. And for more, there's the whole video on why Jesus cursed the fig tree. But that's the brief summary is that they had a vulnerability and were not ashamed of it. And then this message came and caused them to be ashamed of that vulnerability, ashamed of the nakedness. And so the attempt was then to cover the vulnerability with religious works, which is leaves. So these are symbolisms that are contained in that narrative. And the cursing of the fig tree had to do with cursing this whole entire principle. And it's also important to understand that the law came by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ, which means that the law is in opposition to truth. The law that came by Moses is in opposition to truth. And grace is an alignment and harmony with truth. And Jesus said that the truth shall make you free. So what this means is that you know the truth when you are made free. When something liberates you, that's how you know it's truth. When something makes you ashamed of your vulnerability, you've been eating from the wrong tree. If you feel ashamed and afraid of God, you've been eating from the wrong tree. So this cursing of the tree has to do with Jesus cursing the tree of knowledge of good and evil, which is the law of Moses, which makes you feel ashamed of your shortcomings and your vulnerabilities, and then you attempt to cover them with religious works. So let's go into this passage and just start. And I'm not entirely certain but I was trying to find out about what the word, uh, what the name of Bethany means. And I saw that it could conceivably mean the house of misery, which is interesting. Because if we back up to Mark, just before this passage, this is the whole thing, the, the 
coming into the city, Hosanna, blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. They're all praising the coming of the king. This is Mark chapter 11. And in verse 11, it says, Jesus entered into Jerusalem and into the temple. And when he had looked round about upon all things, and now eventide was come, he went out unto Bethany with the twelve. Now, understand part of what I'm conveying here is that each one of these names has a meaning, and we need to stop thinking of a person named Jesus and a place named Jerusalem and a place named Bethany and start substituting the name meanings and then also the symbolic meanings into these things to actually read what the story was telling in the first place. So Jesus means God is salvation, and Jerusalem is the city of peace or the teaching of peace. And from what I understand that I've been able to determine so far, Bethany means house of misery. So we can say that Jesus means God is salvation or salvation or savior. And we have the city of peace is Jerusalem. So we have salvation entered into the city of peace and into the temple. And when he had looked around about upon all things, now the eventide was come, he went out to the house of misery with the twelve which is interesting. He left the city of peace and went to the house of misery, if that's the interpretation. And on the morrow, when they were come from the house of misery, he was hungry. And seeing the tree of knowledge of good and evil afar off, having religious works, he came happily if he might find anything thereof and thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but religious works, for the time of figs was not yet. And Jesus answered and said unto it, No man eat the, f the, the fruit of thee hereafter forever. No man eat your message. No man eat the message of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, the law of Moses, hereafter forever. And his disciples heard it. And they come to the city of peace, and salvation went into the temple, and began to cast out them that sold and bought in the temple, and overthrew the tables of the money changers, and the seats of them that sold doves. And he would not suffer that any man should carry any vessel through the temple. And he taught, saying unto them, Is, is, is it not written, My house shall be called of all nations the house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves? So his objection is that the temple is supposed to be a place of healing and of helping the needy, and instead, it's a place of exploiting those in need. So they've not only not performed the, the function that they're supposed to perform of healing people and helping the needy, they've actually completely inverted the process and exploited those in need. This is why it's so objectionable. They're actually doing the exact reverse of what is supposed to be happening here. And the scribes and chiefs, chief priests heard it and sought how they might destroy him, for they feared him because all the people was astonished at his doctrine. And when even was come, he went out of the city. So now darkness is descending on the city. And in the morning, as light comes again, as they passed by, they saw the tree of knowledge of good and evil, the law of Moses, dried up from the roots. And Peter, calling to remembrance, said unto him, Master, behold, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, the law of Moses, which you cursed, is withered away. And salvation, answering, said unto them, Have faith in God. So what was the original message? The original message was, You have a vulnerability, and God doesn't accept you. You have a shortcoming, and God doesn't accept you. Let's pervert what the law or the the book of Romans is actually saying, where Paul is saying, "Your law tells you that you suck as human beings, so why don't you throw it the fuck out? And let's make a doctrine out of the opposite of what's being said there, and let's have a doctrine that says, "You suck, and God hates you." And here's what you need to do in order to change his perspective on who you are. Here's what you need to do for him to pretend that he doesn't hate you with a violent passion so thorough that he wants to torture you forever and ever. 
And here's what you can do to pay the right price and push the right buttons on the salvation vending machine that we're calling God instead of saying God is salvation because we are to believe on the name of Jesus Christ, which is the name that God is salvation. The thing to believe is what kind of person God is. Have faith in God. He's not out there somewhere. He's not holding your vulnerabilities against you. He's not seeing your shortcomings and thinking there's something wrong with you that you need to change and make different. There's not something where he's made you who you are and he's decided that who you are is disgusting and abhorrent to him and you need to change. No, God's opinion does not need to change. You need to change your opinion of what kind of person God is. That God is salvation. That God is Emmanuel, God with us and within us. So this is interesting because it ties it together. That the fig tree is the law of Moses. And the mountain being cast into the sea is the law of Moses. And it says that in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree, the law of Moses, the tree of knowledge of good and evil dried up from the roots. And Peter calling to remembrance said unto him, Master, behold, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, the law of Moses, which you cursed, is withered away. And God, or Jesus, salvation, answering, said unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Mount Sinai, the law of Moses, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe those things which he said, that the law of Moses is cast into the sea, shall come to pass. And he shall have whatsoever he said, which is that the law of Moses is cast into the sea, that the tree of knowledge of good and evil is withered up by the roots, that they are no more. The law does not apply to you or to me. It is dead. But Jesus Christ is risen. The anointing that God is salvation is what lives on and has created a new creation.